Hey guys, so a couple of disclaimers before I start talking about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, number one, there will be spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen the movie, stop this video now because I plan to spoil the shit out of it. Okay, is that clear? And number two, like the title of this video suggests, or maybe it's down here, um, this is a first impressions video. Which means that my opinions on this movie um, might change the next time I talk about it. So please keep that in mind. Don't try to throw this video in my face as evidence that um, my opinions are inconsistent, okay? I just saw the movie and I'm giving you my opinions based on that first viewing. They might change the second, third, or 100th time that I see this movie, which I plan to watch a lot. Uh, so. Ever since I announced this video, the question that I've gotten the most about it, the question that I've gotten about a film featuring my all-time favorite MCU character in my new favorite franchise in the MCU, now that it has two movies, um, the question that I've gotten the most about that movie is, Erod, were you disappointed with Bruce Campbell's cameo in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? Yes. Yes, I was disappointed. I would have rather have Bruce be an actual character. I mean, we have James Gunn casting his brother in the Marvel movies, giving him an actual role, if not roles, because he does a few, a little bit of the capture motion for a rocket, as well as um, he's the on-set uh, reference for Rocket, as well as Thanos early on. Um, so we have James Gunn giving his brother actual roles in the Marvel movies, all the while Sam Raimi, one of the greatest directors of all time, his first star, his brother from another mother, Bruce Campbell, he always gives them the most ridiculous and sometimes humiliating cameos ever. His last movie, nine years ago, Oz the Great and Powerful, Bruce gets beat up by a munchkin. This movie, he beats himself up. So yeah, disappointed that he didn't get an actual character, but it was a funny cameo nonetheless. And it was a throwback to Evil Dead 2, in which, as most of you who can hold on to your geek cards uh, should know, Bruce uh, gets in a fight with his own hand. His own hand turns evil, he fights it, and we saw a few throwbacks to that during the scene, the way he hits himself, the way he grabs the back of his head and slams it into the pizza pop cart uh, throwbacks to, to uh, Evil Dead, um, blown away that he still has the moves after, after all these years. Um, but here's the thing. He might not have gotten a character. It might be silly. It might be another uh, example of these two lifelong friends taking jabs at one another. But Bruce also got the coveted post credit scene uh, of this movie, meaning that he is the last person that you see in this movie, all right? So that, combined with the fact that my all-time favorite actor, Bruce Campbell, is in a movie with my all-time favorite MCU character in my newly crowned uh, favorite MCU franchise, it's pretty awesome. So there you go. It's, it's, it's complex. Anyway, but... If you are a true Sam Raimi fan, you know that a Bruce Campbell cameo is not the most important cameo in the hierarchy of cameos in his films. The most important cameo is that of Sam Raimi's 1973 Delta 88 Oldsmobile, aka the classic. And there she is in all her glory. Those of you who know, know. Anyway, let's move on. Let's uh, let's talk about the movie. How about that? Um, anyway, so as I said, I'm a huge fan of Doctor Strange, as you can see. Uh, most of my fans know this. So the qu the second question that I've gotten the most is, as a Doctor Strange fan, were you satisfied with this film? Yes, one hundred times over. In fact. The third scene in the movie, which is Doctor Strange and Wong fighting Shimagorath. And yes, I'm calling him Shimagorath, no Gargantos, sorry. 
I know that Marvel doesn't have the rights to the character, but I'm still calling him by the name that I've known him all my life. So Doctor Strange and Wong fighting Shimogorath on the streets of New York. At that point in the movie, once that scene ended, I had already gotten everything that I wanted out of this movie. That is classic vintage Doctor Strange. That is the those are the Doctor Strange style shenanigans that I grew up with as a kid. Love it. I got to see it live and in color on the big screen and it was wonderful. At that point, I was already satisfied. I would have been okay if this movie was just mediocre, but it's not. It's a really good movie. So let's talk about it some more. So, um, the best, the best uh, way that I can talk about this film is simply to go into the cast. And before I talk about the main players, um, ever since I saw this film this past Friday, I've been holding something in. Uh, for many days, something that I haven't been able to say to anyone, something that I'm finally going to get off my chest in this video, and just bear with me because I've been holding it back for quite some time, but holy fucking shit, John Krasinski is Mr. Fantastic, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, to be continued. I will talk about him and the rest of the characters that he was involved with in a few minutes. Uh, let's talk about the principal players. Um, so, as a Hispanic man, it is an incalculable pleasure to see myself represented in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, for the past five weeks, for the past six weeks, we saw Oscar Isaac playing Moon Knight, uh, which was amazing. And then on top of that, this past Friday, we see Cecile Gomez um, playing... America Chavez in this movie, which is just, it made me feel with, a, it made, it filled me with a pride that is undescribable. With that said, a lot of people complaining that she didn't 100% match her comic book counterpart, that America Chavez, for those of you who don't know, in the comics is a real ball buster. She is a no-nonsense motorcycle riding badass who is very self-reliant and doesn't run for anything. She goes head first into battle. And in this movie, she is very much the damsel in distress. She's just running and screaming most of the movie. Well, I have three things to say about that. Number one, she has no control of her powers yet. Understandable why she would be scared. Number two, she is running from the most powerful character in the entire franchise thus far. A character that Doctor Strange, the titular character of this film, that one of the most powerful superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is also running from. Understandable as far as I'm concerned. And number three, and more importantly, this is her first appearance, guys. Let her breathe. Let her become the character that she's in the comics. They know. They know the comics. They know what she's supposed to be like. Give her a second. Have faith in the brand. All right, guys? Jesus. Give it a minute. All right? Fuck. Now, if, if America Chavez appears in another movie, in another streaming series, and she's still you know, running and screaming and freaking out over everything, then I will 100% agree with you, all right? But for now, I accept this as just her first appearance, who she was as opposed to who she will become. Um, what I love about this franchise is that we get to see the progression of the characters. The Tony Stark that said, I am Iron Man, the first Iron Man movie, it's not the same Tony Stark as the one that said, I am Iron Man in Avengers Endgame, all right? Keep that in mind. Let her progress. Let her become the big, badass, unstoppable, super confident, head first in the battle girl that we know and love from the source material. Thank you. Anyway, so Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch. Now, um, Scarlet Witch's uh, involvement in this film is among the most divisive uh, elements in any of these movies thus far. Um, and I just want to say that while I 
sympathize with all of you who did not like seeing her be the antagonist, not the villain, the antagonist of the movie. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I love how passionate people have become for a character that seven, eight years ago, nobody gave a shit about, you know, except for maybe a handful of comic book fans. But the general public just didn't give a shit about. Now they care so much that it, it actually uh, hurts their feelings to see their hero um, make these kind of mistakes. And I, I, I really appreciate that and I respect that. With that said, I hate to break it to you, but this is the most accurate adaptation of the character so far, both movies and cartoons, all right? The sad thing about Scarlet Witch is that she is a tragic figure. She is like Samurai Jack. She's the character that can never truly 100% win. I remember way, way back when Captain America the Winter Soldier came out and she appeared for the first time ever in the post credit scene when she smashed the blocks together, I ran into my best friend Paul Satasha and we were talking and I said to him, oh my god, it's so awesome. Scarlet Witch is going to be in the Marvel movies. And he said, man, if they do that character justice, it's going to be heartbreaking. And he was right, because she is a tragic figure. Um, and don't forget that, A, she's a sympathetic villain. We get what she is doing. She is trying to get her children back. I, I completely understand that. And speaking from a personal experience, if I had the power to bring my wife back to life, I would do it. Because the fact of the matter is that morality takes a back seat to grief. It's, it's the way it is. And I'm not just pulling this out of my ass. I'm telling it to you from personal experience. All right? So as much as I wanted my favorite character to save the day, I also 100% understood why Wanda was doing what she was doing and was not necessarily rooting for her to lose. <sighs> so, the other really important to keep in mind, if you're a big Scarlet Witch fan, is that this movie undoubtedly proved that she is most definitely the mightiest Avenger. Because she kicked everybody's ass. And nobody could stop her except for her. Think about that for a second. The character that went, that fully and indefinitely defeated her in the movie or stopped her was herself. It was the other Wanda from that other universe where she wanted to just move into her house and just take over her life and, and raise her kids. Wanda stopped Wanda. Wanda was the only one that stopped Wanda. There's a Chuck Norris joke here in here somewhere. Um, so please keep that in mind, that this is accurate to the character, that she's in grief, and you're illogical when you're in grief, and that, holy shit, was she a badass in this movie. All right, let's talk about our titular character, Benedict Cumberbatch, as Doctor Strange. So when the trailers to this movie came out and then people immediately started to pass judgment on it because God knows that's the perfect time to judge a movie you know, before you've seen it. Fucking idiots. Uh, people were saying, this movie's too crowded. We're not going to get to see enough of Doctor Strange. He plays like three, maybe four different characters in this fucking movie. We get a lot of Doctor Strange and maybe five characters. I keep remembering more. Um... And Benedict Cumberbatch plays every single version of Strange beautifully, beautifully, with excellent skill, where you can 100% tell the difference between each character. It's not confusing one for the other. Um, we're seeing him uh, slowly evolve, very much as I was describing uh, Tony Stark earlier. We see him evolve from the pretentious prick that he was in the original movie to somebody who's, you know, kind of left his ego go um, and is 100% okay with Wong being the Sorcerer Supreme, which is really cool. Um, one of the complaints that I've heard about this movie, which again is bullshit, uh, is that um, it, it was ridiculous that Doctor Strange could use the Dark Home 
and be fine, but Wanda uses the dark home and she becomes corrupted. Okay, guys, listen to me closely. This is the word, the way the dark home works. It uses what you want to corrupt you. Okay, Wanda wants her kids back, so that's how she gets corrupted. All right, what Doctor Strange wants more in the world from the first movie all the way to this movie is to be with Christine Palmer. Okay, in this movie. And in the previous one, for that matter, he comes to the inevitable conclusion that he cannot be with her. It's not meant to be. And furthermore, which is even sadder, is he's not meant to be with her on any universe, which is heartbreaking. So as at the moment that he uses the dark home, the dark hold, I'm sorry, um, he, there's nothing that it can offer it that he wants. All he wants is to uh, stop Wanda from killing America and ruining this other Wanda's life. There you go. That's the reason he could get away with using it without being corrupted. Um, also, let's not forget, he just had a fight with a version of himself that allowed himself to be corrupted by Darkhold. Okay? <laughs> He's seen what it can do to him. And then on top, on top, on top of that... Christine, a version of Christine, helps him deal with it. Help pulls him out of it, out of it, pulls him back to reality. They have the chat about him being in love with her in every universe, and she says, "That's nice, but it's not meant to be. Sorry." And it sucks, but at the same time, it explains why he wasn't corrupted by the book. And it reestablishes that sometimes you don't always get what you want, okay? Um, that's the beauty of Marvel Comics, and that's what set them apart way back in the 60s from DC Comics, is that these are stories where the heroes can lose. Gwen Stacy still dies in spite of Peter Parker trying to save her. The Thing will never be Ben Grimm again. Scarlet Witch will never have a family. And Doctor Strange will never be with Christine Palmer. Anyway, um, let's lighten things up a little bit. Let's talk about um, probably the number one thing that got all True Blue comic book fans excited about this film, the first cinematic appearance of the Illuminati. Um, so this is the one part of the movie that, that I have a, a little bit of an issue with. My one and only note, the only thing that I didn't like about this movie was the use of Carl Mordo in this movie. Uh, they brought back the extraordinary Showatel Ejiofor to play the character. And after they teased us in the last movie with that post credit scene where he goes on a crusade to get rid of all the sorcerers. There are too many sorcerers. And he's going on this crusade and then this movie comes and the 616, the Marvel Cinematic Universe Prime, Mordo, is not in it. There's just a throwaway line where Doctor Strange says, oh, he hates me now, so we fight each other every time we, we see each other. I want to see that. What the fuck? How dare you uh, tease us with something and then just only address it in a throwaway line. That was just, that was bullshit. Uh, and then um, we do see, finally, we get to see Doctor Strange fight, fight a version of Mordo. They fight each other and then Doctor Strange just leaves. He just leaves him in the, in the judgment room, whatever that was, but where the Illuminati meet. Um, and he just leaves him there and that's it. That's the last time we see him. So that's my only big bone to pick with this movie. But holy freaking shit balls. The Illuminati was in this movie. Um, what a lineup. Lashana Lynch back, but this time as an alternate reality version of Captain Marvel. Haley Atwell as Captain Carter from Marvel's What If. Um, Anson Mount from The Inhumans, that horrible show that everybody hated. But the cast was still really good, except for the girl who played Crystal. We might be able to blame uh, the material and the director, but... In that particular show, she wasn't very good. I hope she's a better actor in other things. But the rest of the cast was really good. It was just a really bad show. Anson Mount, 
being one of those actors that was really good. And he got another shot, not only at Black Bolt, but he was in the full suit. I think it was CG. I think he wasn't wearing the suit on set to keep it a secret. Uh, but so fucking cool to actually see him in his full Black Bolt glory. Um, and of course, oh my God, Jason Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic. As uh, most of you know, I'm a massive, massive, massive Fantastic Four fan. I had other choices in my mind. In fact, I did a casting couch once on Fantastic Four where I named another actor as uh, my specific choice to play Mr. Fantastic. But the moment that I heard somebody say that John Krasinski would be perfect as Reed Richards and his real-life wife, Emily Blunt, be perfect as Sue Storm, I became 100% married to that idea. Like, I couldn't get it out of my mind. I desperately wanted this man to play this character. So much so when that, when that stupid moronic rumor started to circulate that he was going to show up in WandaVision. Um, I believed it like an idiot. And of course, he's not in that. But when he popped up in this movie and the, the smartest man in the world, Reed Richards, and he comes out of a portal and he turns around and it's him and he's wearing the suit. The suit looks so fucking good. <sighs> That's awesome. And uh, he better be Reed Richards in the upcoming Fantastic Four movie because uh, that'll be bullshit. That'll be the ultimate F you to Fantastic Four fans if they teased us with an alternate version of him played by the actor that we want. And then it's not him. Oh God, I, I, I won't be able, I won't know what to do with myself. And of course, the one that everybody was most excited about, Patrick Stewart back as Professor Xavier in the yellow hover chair from the comics. And then when he rolled out, you heard a little bit of the theme tune from the animated series uh, composed, the, the iconic X-Men theme song composed by Ron Wasserman. <laughs> a little taste um just ah boom and boom movies cartoon fans movie and cartoon fans satisfied professor xavier is right there he's talking to dr strange he's got you know peggy carter over here he's got mr fantastic over there he is there he's in the marvel cinematic universe and it is wonderful all right let's address uh the bitching for this particular scene um People, of course, pissed off that they give us the Illuminati, they give us all these characters, and then Wanda shows up and just kills them all. Except for Mordo, who was the one character to serve to die. Um, <laughs> so, guys, I get it. We finally get these characters and they get eliminated. But guess fucking what? Whenever alternate reality versions of characters are introduced in comics nine times out of ten this is exactly what happens the creators kill them off in the most elaborate and horrible ways possible because they know that they would never be able to do that to the characters proper to the main universe characters so they take advantage of the fact that they can finally kill them off and they do so did it bother me to see Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Strange, Professor Xavier, uh, Captain Marvel killed... No, okay? This is the way it goes down. This is the way it happens. They have been trying to sell us Scarlet Witch as this ultimate threat. The character so powerful that she can make Doctor Strange run. The character so powerful that she can almost single-handedly beat Thanos on her own. The fact that she cleaned house, that she walked in and walked right through some of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe makes sense with the narrative. It does not bother me. These are not the universe proper characters for this franchise. They're from another universe. The one character that I feel that you can make an argument for is Cap uh, Captain Carter. Um, because uh, they didn't specify whether or not this was the Captain Carter from the What If uh, animated series. If it is, if this is the Captain Carter from the animated series and this is her ultimate fate, then this is really sad. I don't think that it is because 
um, her Doctor Strange was the one that ended, you know, his entire universe. Um, and we see in this movie that her Doctor Strange was um, executed by the Illuminati. So I don't think that it is, but it might be. So if it is, you're right. And that's really sad and fucked up that they finally introduced Peggy Carter as Captain Carter in the movies only to kill her off immediately in the very next scene. Um, did anybody notice that she has a jetpack in the movie? I have a theory about that. I think this is an homage to Haley Atwell's first MCU director, Joe Johnston. Because, because Joe Johnston didn't just direct Captain America the First Avenger, he also directed The Rocketeer. And from what I could tell, her jetpack looked very similar to Cliff Secord's jetpack in The Rocketeer. Uh, but again, that's just a theory. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I apologize. Anyway, let's talk about the mid credit scene. Holy shit balls. If you are a true Doctor Strange fan, you more than likely lost your ever-loving shit because you know what's coming. Um, so in 2017, 2018, around there, reports started to surge of both Angelina Jolie and Charlize Theron having meetings, secret meetings with Marvel. They both went and they met with Marvel Studios. At the time, Captain Marvel, the Captain Marvel movie was in the horizon. And so a lot of people were speculating whether those two amazing actors were being considered to play that role. Of course, we eventually find out that that was not the case. Brie Larson had been chosen to play Captain Marvel, which is still a great choice. Now we know that Angelina, what they intended for Angelina Jolie, thanks to the Eternals, and now thanks to this movie, we know what that meeting with Charlize Theron was about. She is Clea, who is Doctor Strange's greatest apprentice, the niece of Dormammu, Doctor Strange's future wife, and the next Sorcerer Supreme after Doctor Strange. Yes, this is yet another female character that is equally as powerful, if not more powerful, than her male counterparts, and another legacy female character, just like uh, Kate Bishop is to Clint Barton and Jane Foster is to Thor, okay? And to all those narrow-minded, douchey, sexist assholes that claim that Marvel Studios has some kind of an agenda with these characters, know that it has been like this since the 70s. Since Giant X-Men number one, 1975, on the front cover, the most powerful character in that comic that introduced a whole new team of X-Men is Storm. A few years later, Carol Danvers is introduced as Miss Marvel. 1980, Jennifer Walters introduced as She-Hulk. And I can keep going and going and going, because guess what? I can do this all day. It has always been like this. It was like this before you fuckers were born and it'll continue to be like this. Please shut the fuck up and don't talk until you know what you're talking about, which by the way, is never, so stay quiet. So tired of those fuckers. Anyway, <laughs> so, Clea, as I've alluded, is one of the most important characters in Doctor Strange lore. Um, and not only that, but in that scene, she rips a hole in the fabric of reality and they go into the dark dimension. Um, and she mentions that Doctor Strange, with his multiversal travel, caused an incursion, which A, uh, teases to the possible uh, Dark Dimension storylines from the comic, which are awesome, by the way. Um, teases the future of the franchise by introducing Charlize Theron as Clea. Um, and it, more importantly, it teases what could potentially be their next big, massive crossover movie for either this phase or the a few phases down the line, which is Secret Wars. Now, for those of you who haven't read, Secret Wars is uh, a relatively modern crossover event in which uh, multiple versions of 
the uh, Marvel Universe crossed over with one another and suddenly characters from one universe could be part of the main of the Marvel Universe proper, like Mar Miles Morales and the uh, Samuel L. Jackson or Ultimate version of Nick Fury. Um, and that is the big, massive comic book storyline that the Russo brothers uh, went on record in, on saying that if Marvel, they would return to direct a Marvel movie if Marvel Studios were to adapt that storyline. Um, if they do and this happen, I hope to God that they bring their writers, Marcus and McFeely, with them. Because uh, those four are magic. Uh, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Captain America, Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, awesome. Um, they have the best streak in... Uh, in uh, Marvel Studios, in the MCU. So, I was not a big fan of the comic. It's not bad. I was just, I didn't think it was that good of a crossover. It was much more of a Fantastic Four storyline than a Marvel Universe storyline. Uh, read it if you doubt, if you doubt what I'm saying. Um, and you'll see what I'm saying. Um, but, I have faith in those four men and the work that they do. Uh, they've taken stories that were not very good, like Civil War, and made them good. They've taken stories that were already good, like the Infinity Gauntlet, and made it better. Uh, so I have all the faith in the world in them. If uh, they are involved with a potential Secret War movie, I am all in. Um, so anyway... Um, let me close this out by sharing um, my potential expectations for a Doctor Strange 3 movie. Um, number one, I want Mordo storyline addressed. I want to see the universe proper, Carl Mordo, be involved, and I want to see what happened with his crusade to get rid of all the sorcerers. That needs to be addressed. Uh, it's, it's, it's been six years. Of, since they teased that, all right? They need to address it. Uh, it needs to be touched upon. Um, Marvel Studios just wrote a very big check by introducing Clea, so they have to do that justice, okay? You just, you just don't throw in such a huge character into the mix and, and not properly service that, all right? So that's the second thing. Three, I want to see a legitimate, classic... Doctor Strange villain, a true adversary in this next movie, preferably Nightmare, okay? Uh, so those are the main three things that I want to see. Um, stuff that is frivolous and unimportant, I definitely want to see, I would love to see Dormammu up here again, even though his appearance in the first movie was very satisfying to me. Wouldn't mind seeing him one more time, uh, especially if Benedict Cumberbatch is playing him again. And the other thing that I would love to see, if it were at all possible, I would love to see Doctor Strange meet Everett Ross. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be cool to see these, these two guys together? I mean, I just feel like they would get along. Okay, maybe it's just me, all right? Maybe it's just me. Okay, so next week... The Infinity War Journal continues with the sixth part of my review series in which I will do my honest review on Black Panther. And after that, there should be no further interruptions. I just uh, wanted to take the week to watch this movie, enjoy it, and make this video for you guys. That is all. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Um, agree, disagree, feel free to say so in the comment section below. Um, all that I ask is please... Respect each other's opinions. Don't fight. We're all on the same team. Uh, there's no need to bring discourse here in this comment section. All right, guys? Um, and thank you for your ongoing support because I could not do what I do without you.